the American walks every day normal going to work. He's walking down town in Manhattan and all of a sudden two planes hit the Twin Towers and they have no clue why would somebody do such a thing. The deliberate and deadly attacks which were carried out yesterday against our country were more than acts of terror. They were acts of war. Radical Islam has declared a war. Radical Islam is at war now with the West. When I saw the second airplane hit, I knew jihad has come to America. What happened in Bali and in Istanbul and now in Madrid are close to home for all of us. The tentacles of terrorism are reaching out to every corner of the world. London's worst attack since the Second World War a series of blasts rocked the capital during the busy morning rush hour. A shocking toll of dead and injured, dozens are described as in a critical condition. Beslan School number one is a scene of carnage tonight. Hundreds of children are feared dead. Every single country in the world is dealing with this on one level or another. You see that the Thais are dealing with it, you see that the Filipinos are dealing with it, the Europeans are dealing with it in Madrid, the Russians are dealing with it in Chechnya, and the British are dealing with it in London and in Manchester. And of course you see in the Middle East, whether it's in Iraq, in Iran, in Syria, in Lebanon, in Egypt, and of course in Israel, in Saudi Arabia, and you go to Africa and you see that jihadis are operating everywhere from Djibouti to South Africa. All of these areas that we refer to as separate wars, the Palestinian war in Israel, the Iraq war, they see all of these not as specific wars, but as fronts in a global jihad. Paradise. Right now, it looks all too possible.
نقسم بدماء وأشلاء أطفالنا وعذابات أسرانا وسنمضي نفجر أجسادنا We need to understand the culture that produced terrorism. Nani Darwish is no stranger to terror. She was born in Egypt and grew up in the Gaza Strip. In the 50s, her father headed Fedayeen terror operations against Israel. Some people view the current situation with the Middle East as a clash of civilization. I think it's more than that, way more than that. I think it's an outright declaration of war from radical Islam on Western culture, on the Judeo-Christian culture, and we should know that. It's a declaration of war. These bombings are taking place not because someone likes to see bodies and uh, count uh, casualties, it's part of a campaign of jihad, holy war, to bring down the West, to undermine the very foundations of Christianity and Judaism. The Islamists hate everything other than what they are themselves. Um, they killed, for example, over 100,000 Algerians who disagreed with their brand of Islam. These are fellow Muslims. There is a particular strand of Islam that has in fact challenged what I think is the absolutely central pillar of, uh, of human civilization as such, namely the sacredness of life itself. <laughs> I can tell you that as a Muslim, I feel very worried and I feel very concerned. Uh, I'm ashamed actually because I feel that Islam has been hijacked by different fanatic groups. Most people don't realize that Muslims are also victims. Because if they disagree, they get killed. Would some Muslim or some Arab who in his heart believes that the Arab terrorism is terrorism, can he say it in publicly? He will be lynched in a Muslim society if he says that Hamas is a terrorist. What is worrying is that there is a silent majority that is not speaking out in a very strong voice against these groups. And I hope it's only out of fear and not out of sympathy with people like Osama bin Laden or Abu Musab Zarqawi. The question then becomes, what percentage of the Islamic world supports jihad and could be considered radicals or Islamic fundamentalists? The Muslim world consists of more than one billion people and it's very difficult to tell what percentage of this one billion supports Al-Qaeda or Zarqawi or other terrorist groups. I would estimate that some 10 to 15 percent, and let me stress it's an estimate, of Muslims worldwide support militant Islam. That is not to say that only 10 to 15 percent are anti-American or anti-Zionist. No, that's much larger. One point two billion Muslims out there with 15 percent. This is a huge number. This is as big as the United States of America. And the, the bad thing about it is that they're spread all throughout.
In the Middle East, Islam is our identity, it's our political life, it's our social life, it's our life. As a child, I attended uh, Gaza elementary schools. And uh, we were taught that jihad is a religious holy war for the sake of Allah. That's what it is, to conquer the world for Allah. That is jihad. These are actual scenes broadcast on Arab television. Daily, my uh, classmates would recite poetry, jihadist poetry. And when they recited it, they were crying. They were uh, wishing shahada, to be shaheed, to die as a martyr, to die in jihad. I would summarize the struggle today between radical Islam and the West with the phrase from a Jordanian school book and also a Palestinian school book. And the teaching in Islamic education is this religion will destroy all other religions through the Islamic Jihad fighters. It's Islam against the other religions. It shows how mainstream some of these concepts which are seen as radical Islam have become uh, or are in the mainstream Arab world today. Radical Islamic proponents believe that the West has been engaged in a conspiracy to subjugate Islam. <laughs> What they are saying is the United States is a threat, is a danger to them, is trying to dominate them, is trying to turn the whole world into America, and this is what they are telling their people they have to fight against. And therefore, uh, it is obligatory of Muslims to strike back. The West needs to be defeated one way or another. I mean, therein lies the issue of the threat of militant Islam, the anointed right to carry out executions um, of anybody who is considered a threat to Islam itself. The word jihad in the Muslim vocabulary, in the Muslim consciousness, is a very powerful word. First of all, the word jihad in literal Arabic basically means a struggle coming from the word jihada, to, to struggle. Jihad in the traditional sense means self-struggle. Look within yourself to try and make yourself a better person. People think about it, yes, jihad does mean self-struggle, struggle within. But so does Mein Kampf. Mein Kampf means my struggle. But what struggle? Nazism had a struggle with what? What did the Jews do to tango in Nazi Germany? Jihad is being used in the Middle East as struggle with the Jewish people, struggle with the West. Muhammad, 
تعال وقطع راسه ونحن نقطعها والله لا نقطعها ايها اليهود الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر الجهاد في سبيل الله الجهاد في سبيل الله مراهق بريطاني انتزع قلب عجوز بعدما طعنه وشرب من دمها هناك ناس مهوسون بمص دماء كبار السن فهؤلاء وحوش على شكل بشر The main theme in most of the Arab media is hostility to Israel and the United States and the West آنکان تندی سه بی همتای آزادی دشمن توحید و توحین خداوند In the Arab media there is a uh, process of demonizing Jews and the West There is widespread use of this theme of portraying Israel and the United States as Satan and this is a, an integral part of Arab uh, Islamist propaganda الشيطان الشيطان مغرور الشيطان يحتل الأوطان بسلاح الطغيان إنه الشيطان منبع الطغيان إنه الشيطان منبع الطغيان After 9-11, a lot of people in the West asked, why do they hate us? And start, some of them even started blaming themselves. Uh, looking, what, what could America have done? There were numerous examples in American academia and media after 9-11 that placed the blame of 9-11 on American imperialism around the world. Uh, the message was, these people must be suffering so much if they're willing to blow up the World Trade Center. And they started saying, what could have we done? to make them so angry at us. Is it our foreign policy? Is it us? Did, what did we do? From the Western eyes, that seems very logical. Why would someone go blow, blow up the World Center? Now, this message was given in academia, it was given in, in a significant part of the media, and it is unfortunate because, again, it is distracting the population from the real source of the problem, which is an ideology which wants to destroy the West. It's their duty to to do jihad. This clip was broadcast on Palestinian TV the day after London suffered four suicide terror attacks. <laughs> أعداءك أعداء الدين اللهم احصهم عددا وقتلهم بددا ولا تغادر منهم أحدا The amount of hate propaganda is far more extensive and pervasive than the attention it has received in the Western media. If you want to get people to fight, you have to make them think that there's a threat and then they're in danger. در کمین نشستند و تا نابودی کاملتان از شما دست بر نخواهند داشت سریعا قیام کنید که جهان ایمن از سیاد نیست This is an integral part, an integral part of Islamist propaganda. It recruits a lot of terrorists. That's the purpose of the Islamist uh, propaganda, is to make the people angry, hateful against the West, to be willing to fight them.
الموت لأمريكا In a television interview, an Arab intellectual admits that there is a distinct connection between propaganda and terrorism. والتعصب هي بداية العنف الغلو عندهم في الرأي والعنف هو اللي يؤدي للإرهاب يعني هو تعصب تطرف عنف إرهاب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا لا مرسي ويل ناو ويل ناو لتعي فلا إرا لا لا مرسي لن بقى من يريد أن أشعي إرا على مسايد الصوت سلام بيتيز يا مان شوري من أليف مايا from Kandahar to Ramallah, we come in star. Peace to Hamas and the Hezbollah. OBL booby like a shining star. Like the way we destroyed them two tower. Ha <laughs> ha. On 9-11, with the destruction of the World Trade Center, there was a general response in the Muslim world of delight. With the, with the Palestinians, perhaps the most extravagant. Two weeks before 9-11, uh, the Mufti of Palestine, Ikrim al-Sabri, who is the senior religious figure uh, in the Palestinian Authority, on the radio openly prayed for God to destroy Israel, Britain, and the United States. <laughs> When you hear the same message over and over and over again, it becomes part of the way you see the world. But hatred for the West is not limited to the Islamic world. Radical Islam has for years been spreading its ideology in the West. This jihad rally is taking place on the streets of London. The infiltration of radical Islam is so deep, it's shocking. And everyone's in denial about it. The minute you say, oh, this is an extremist group, you know, all of a sudden, it's, oh, you're not being politically correct. You have a Muhajirun, who's an open-fledged terrorist entity, speaking out on the streets, calling for Muslims to jihad against Britain. UK, 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 We've been infiltrated by people who want the Quran to replace our constitution. We went to 1995, Hamas has the largest infrastructure of all terrorist organizations on American soil today. They are not trying to be part of the American way of life. They are not trying to be part of our culture. They are here with an agenda to make Islam the law of the land. Just to show 
where our loyalty belongs to. You see this flag here? It's going to go on the floor. And to us, our loyalty does not belong to this flag. Our loyalty belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Takbir! Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Of course, not all Muslims are like that. But we've been infiltrated with this kind of agenda. And uh, America has to wake up because we are strangling ourselves with our political correctness. There is tremendous deception in terms of saying one thing publicly and another thing privately. Yasser Arafat obviously was the master of this dual agenda in terms of openly supporting pluralism or nonviolence or condemning terrorism. I condemned completely these terrorist activities. And then secretly or behind closed doors supporting it. Sometimes you would find a Muslim who appears to be moderate. We were the first, as you may remember, post September the 11th, who said that the actions of flying planes full of innocent civilians into buildings is not legitimate. But uh, in his deeds, uh, he's not uh, as moderate as uh, he is. We are here to talk about the Magnificent 19. Those who two years ago today split the world into two camps, into the camp of Islam and the camp of non-Islam or Kufr. Those who revived the obligation of Jihad worldwide. The Magnificent 19. They were praising the hijackers, celebrating the attacks on New York. The deception is so high and so successful that I'm afraid we're losing the battle. In order to expose British terror groups like Al Mahujaroon and supporters of Sharia, Glenn Genvy collaborated with Jonathan Galt and acquired recordings of the group's meetings held in London mosques. The tapes reveal open incitement to violence and terror, in particular from Abu Hamza al-Masri, who calls upon followers to kill the kuffar, or non-Muslims. What makes Allah happy? Allah is happy when a has been killed. Abu Hamza, in one of the clips, is talking about the word kufa, that if you are not a Muslim and you live in a Muslim land, you are like a cow. That's his work. You see the Islamic rule, if a Kafir goes into a Muslim country and he's walking by, he's like a cow going, anybody could take him. That is the Islamic rule, and this is the opinion of the Fuqaha. It's not my opinion. If you read the books of, of Jihad, you'll see. You can take him to market. You can sell him. Uh, kafir is walking by. He went, he went inside. You catch him. What, what, what are you doing here? Then he's a boot. You can sell him the market. You can kill him. If Muslims cannot take them to the, to, and, you know, and sell them in the, in the market, then you just kill him. It's okay. Hamza's a speaker, he brainwashes people. He gets funding, he sends them to commit murder abroad. Al Mujahiroon is a UK based Islamic pressure group with offices in Pakistan. 25 year old Abdul Salam grew up in London's Brick Lane. Now he's a recruiter for the Taliban. What's your involvement in recruiting and training young British Muslims? Who the Muslims from Britain is hundreds of them that come over. Uh, from Britain to uh, Pakistan or Afghanistan. And what we do is we supply them with weapons, clothing, we, f we feed them, we shelter them. Yeah, I'm British, British born, British bred. Are you willing to kill British soldiers? I'm willing to kill British soldiers simply because of the fact that they're engaging in a war that is against my brethren. The links from the UK go abroad and back. This is what makes it a global problem. If you take the, the London bombings, the bombers were from Britain. They were from the city of Leeds, a two-hour drive north of London. British Muslims, but British. I and thousands like me have forsaken everything for what we believe. We are at war and I'm a soldier. Now you too will taste the reality of this situation. We are living with them. They are here. They're not outside our borders, they are here. So when you ask, is radical Islam a threat to Europe? Of course it is, because you find this, in, the very, this large and growing minority population that is growing more and more radical and rejects 
more and more blatantly, overtly, and stridently the societies in which they operate. They are using our laws against us. They are using our democracy against us. And they know it. They know exactly what they're doing. When you think just from a military perspective, forgetting everything else, the September 11th hijackers trained for their mission to attack the United States inside the United States of America. That is something unbelievable. Here these 19 Arab Islamic fundamentalists come to the United States, dress like Americans, get American driver's license, register in American flight schools, and in American flight schools, they learn how to destroy the World Trade Center with American jetliners. That is an unbelievable thing. That means that you don't need necessarily to have geographical uh, uh, territory on, at your disposal because you can use the geography, use the territory of your enemies in order to destroy your enemies. That is uh, the most postmodern type of warfare we've ever seen. I think the world, despite the number of attacks on various countries, is still in denial. They don't want to believe that someone has declared war on them. In the 1930s, the danger of Nazism was there. It was in everything Hitler wrote and said, in everything the Nazi authorities did. In the corruption of a whole generation of German youth, through the propaganda of Nazism in schools. But people thought, well, this is a German problem. It's a limited problem. Uh, we have our own problems. We have our unemployment. And I think the same is true today. They don't connect the dots. They don't connect the acts together. They don't see that Islamic fundamentalism is a global network and a global problem. There is no terrorist threat. There is no terrorist threat. Yes, there have been horrific acts of terrorism, and yes, there will be acts of terrorism again. But that does not mean that there's just some massive terrorist threat. Uh, we have to worry about terrorism. If terrorism had struck on the West Coast rather than the East Coast, some of the folks in Hollywood might have a somewhat different view. People don't want to feel that this is part of a single threat, because if you come to that conclusion, and I'm sure it's the true conclusion, then you have to do something about it. If you ignore a real threat, like has happened in the past before World War II, uh, then the world will pay with many, many millions of dead. In Second World War, the West was sleeping. The Munich uh, Accords came to, regarding to what should we do about this Adolf Hitler who wants to take over Czechoslovakia. So, what did the parliament do in, in, in Great Britain? They got together and they said, well, we need to give Hitler land for peace. In return for Hitler's guarantee of world peace, Chamberlain and Eladje prevailed upon Czechoslovakia to give up the Sudetenland without a fight. In Britain, a happy Chamberlain came back declaring he had achieved peace, peace in our time. One of the most tragic and ironic scenes in all history. This morning, I had another talk with the German Chancellor, Herr Hitler. And here is the paper which bears his name upon it as well as mine. Chamberlain believed that they could do a deal with Hitler, that Britain and Germany had a special affinity. We regard the agreement signed last night and the Anglo-German naval agreement as symbolic of the desire of our two peoples never to go to war with one another again. Winston Churchill had warned his country and his government that they were pursuing a disastrous course with regard to appeasing Germany. Peace, it wasn't peace. By taking the Sudetenland, they had made Czechoslovakia defenseless. A ripe plum ready to fall into Hitler's lap. 
Within six months of declaring that he wanted no more territory anywhere, he violated the Munich Agreement. Austria and Czechoslovakia were gone without a fight, and Hitler was getting his control of Eastern Europe. Poland was next on the map. Churchill never considered himself a great leader. He always considered that he had failed, because from 1933 to 1939, he had warned his country and his government. So when war came, and when in May 1940 he was asked to be prime minister, he felt he was only there because he had failed. That if he had been listened to, if the country had understood the German danger, if the country had allied with other states threatened by Germany, then this situation would never have come to pass that Hitler could have been deterred. Perhaps it could have been stopped. Perhaps millions of lives could have been saved. Today, the press, by minimizing the potential threats, by ignoring the potential threats, are doing a tremendous disservice to the West by not uh, alarming the people to what they should be uh, alarmed about. When you ignore what people are saying, when they're actively uh, on a daily basis, calling for your own annihilation, calling for the annihilation of your country. You're ignoring them at your own risk. The same thing is happening now again. History is repeating itself. I was a very intense believer in the Nazi ideology. And I know what uh, a supreme dedication to an ideology can do. From an early age, Alphonse Heck was influenced by the Nazi worldview. He joined the Hitler Youth at the age of 10, and by the end of World War II, he was a high-ranking officer of the Hitler Youth. It is absolutely correct to say, if you can't learn from the events of Nazi Germany, you will not be able to, to grasp the true intent of the danger of the radical Muslim world today. You're simply hiding. History has an unfortunate habit of always repeating itself. The idea that the radical Muslims have and that Nazis had is they demonize the Jews. You know, they, they just turn them into demons. And I mean, this is exactly what happened in Germany. Now, can you imagine, we were enlightened people and we fell for this. Why wouldn't Muslims fall for this? They are killing the infidels just like the preacher in the mosque told them to do. It's their duty to kill them. If Israel is not the day of the day, these attacks are in the power of God. Israel! Israel! I watched anti-Semitism since I was a young kid, and now the world is reaping. These eggs are hatching. And what's coming out is literally uh, something that comes uh, out of Nazi Germany. The 
same as in Nazi Germany. The Boy Scouts in Nazi Germany, we had the youth. The youth was being robbed from being youth. <laughs> I think the worst form of child abuse is teaching a child to hate. What we have on Palestinian TV and on Saudi TV over and over again are little kids being taught songs, I want to be a suicide bomber. And the youth who are listening to this day and night what do you expect to happen? A Palestinian teenager showed up at a crowded West Bank checkpoint wearing a suicide bomb vest. Soldiers sent a yellow robot to hand scissors to the boy so he could cut off the vest. Once the boy was out of harm's way, the bomb vest was detonated. And I think this is a crime that the Muslim bird commits against his children. Hitler committed a crime against young Germans. It took me a long time to see that. But what the Muslims do to their own children is even worse. They tell Arab children that uh, Jews bake cookies with their blood. <laughs> This is a scene from the television series Al Shatat. It was broadcast on satellite TV stations that reach hundreds of millions of viewers. Throughout the Middle Ages, there was this libel that the Jews needed uh, blood of a Christian child to make matzah. Now, of course, today the world knows this is totally, totally libelous accusation, no connection to truth at all. Yet the Al Shatat film was able to include uh, a video depiction of this ancient blood libel as if this is real Jewish ideology. no shame in Arab media, in the, the degree they are ready to cover hate speech and lies, outright lies against the Western Israel. This is a war of propaganda in which the same techniques of subversion that we saw earlier in the challenge posed by fascism and Nazism are repeating themselves. The propaganda of Islam is very similar to the propaganda of Nazism. It's the same hate speech, paranoia, and us against them. Here is a critical point that is generally overlooked. The anti-Semitism of the Nazis had a great appeal already in the mid-1930s to many Arab nationalists and Islamic fundamentalists. From the mid-30s, from 1936 on, Hitler and his propaganda sections made a great effort to win over the Arab peoples of the Middle East. We see that the undisputed leader of the Palestinian Arab national movement of the 1920s, 1930s and 40s, uh, Haj Amin al-Husseini, the Mufti of Jerusalem, was a fervent admirer of Adolf Hitler. The Mufti was one of the founders of the radical Islamic movement, and Hitler saw at once that this man not only could serve his purpose, but wanted to serve his purpose. 
There is a very important meeting between Hitler and the Mufti of Jerusalem on the 28th of November 1941, of which we have a full protocol. And what Hitler explains is that this is first and foremost a war of extermination against Jewry. And he tells him to lock this secret in his heart. He is revealing it to the Mufti. It's extraordinary he should choose the leader of the Palestinian Arab National Movement for this revelation, which is in an official German document. It seemed strange to us that a Mufti who was not a pure Aryan was being received by Hitler. But they said, no, we have the same goal, which is the extermination of the Jews. The Mufti was sent to the Balkans, where he raised a Bosnian Muslim SS division. He had several SS divisions, the Hanshar division, for example, where they had nominally Croatian officers, but the rank and file of the unit were entirely Muslim, Arab Muslims, and they were bringing them in from all over the world. I was utterly astonished that the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem had raised a Panzer division of Bosnian Muslims to fight along the Waffen SS. The fanatic Muslim world and Hitler both agreed that no ideology can exist beyond theirs. It's all encompassing. A secular dogma like Nazism is less dangerous than Isl this Islamofascism that we see today. It's less dangerous because Islamofascism has a religious twist to it. It says God the Almighty ordered you to do this, not the Fuhrer. You know, so it is way more dangerous. It's trying to grow itself in 55 Muslim states. So potentially you could have a success rate of several Nazi Germanys if these people get their way. They've been very clear about it. They're the same as Hitler's goals, you know. Uh, kill all the Jews, crush the democracies, destroy Western civilization. They wish to strike down the West. They want to defeat the West. They want to defeat Christianity. They want to defeat Judaism. Islam is superior than the Jews, than the Christians, than the Buddhists, than the Hindus. The only deen Allah accepts is Al-Islam. And whoever seeks any other deen apart from Islam will never be accepted. And you may say to yourself, no, 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 they're innocent. No Kafir is innocent. Two blasts just minutes apart, outside two churches in Baghdad, as those inside worshipped. And you too will meet your destruction, because Allah's religion will prevail on this earth. <laughs> They want to spread Islam in their own way. It's very clear, we've heard it so many times from many Muslim leaders, that they want to Islamize the world. Islam Radical Islamic groups want to see the world unified under Islam. It's only a matter of time until we rule Earth, until we control Earth. One day, this very flag will fly over the parliament in London. We will see this flag that will fly over the White House. And we will see the Black House, the Kaaba, will take over the whole world. 
Islam to the world. You will take over USA. You will take over UK. You will take over Europe. You will defeat them all. You will get victory. You will take over Egypt. We trust in Allah. Indeed, that is me who sent his messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, with the deen of Haq, with Islam, to dominate all of our other religions, to dominate the United States, to dominate the world, even though the non-Muslims may hate it. At the end of the day, Islam must control earth, whether we like it or not. It's a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a promise from Rasulullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. started as a European war has developed as the Nazis always intended it should develop into a war for world domination. It is coming very close to home. Will our children too wander off in search of new gods? We do not accept, we will not permit this Nazi shape of things to come. We know that these people act in the name of Islam. But we also know that the vast and overwhelming majority of Muslims here and abroad are decent and law-abiding people who abhor this act of terrorism every bit as much as we do. So if they truly want to bring out the compassion and peace element in Islam. They really have to behave like it. They have to teach it in their schools. It is the duty of all moderate Muslims to stand up and speak against the hate, to speak against the jihad. If they don't agree with it, then let us hear your voices. We want to hear the voices. And the Western world need to stand up and support the voices of the moderate. The very few who are speaking out, the Western world need to support them, need to do everything we can to empower them. It would be a terrible disservice to those Muslims who are liberal, who are democratic, who are modern, who want to live a civilized life, to throw them in with the barbarians. Because they are on the right side. And more than that, they have a great deal to offer in the war against militant Islam. It is through hope and education that we will be able to win this war and accomplish peace. It's important that those engaged in terrorism realize that our determination to defend our values and our way of life is greater than their determination to cause death and destruction to innocent people in a desire to impose extremism on the world. Ultimately, the price we're talking about is the price of freedom. In every generation, I think, we're called upon at some point to stand up for that ideal.
There is no evil that I'm aware of in, in history that has simply disappeared of its own accord. recognize the danger and you don't do anything about it, you are risking uh, your demise. We cannot claim ignorance anymore. Where evil triumphs, it is because there were not enough good people to stand up to defeat it.
the American walks every day normal going to work. He's walking down town in Manhattan and all of a sudden two planes hit the Twin Towers and they have no clue why would somebody do such a thing. The deliberate and deadly attacks which were carried out yesterday against our country were more than acts of terror. They were acts of war. Radical Islam has declared the war. Radical Islam is at war now with the West. When I saw the second airplane hit, I knew jihad has come to America. What happened in Bali and in Istanbul and now in Madrid are close to home for all of us. The tentacles of terrorism are reaching out to every corner of the world. London's worst attack since the Second World War a series of blasts rocked the capital during the busy morning rush hour. A shocking toll of dead and injured, dozens are described as in a critical condition. Beslan School number one is a scene of carnage tonight. Hundreds of children are feared dead. Every single country in the world is dealing with this on one level or another. You see that the Thais are dealing with it, you see that the Filipinos are dealing with it, the Europeans are dealing with it in Madrid, the Russians are dealing with it in Chechnya, and the British are dealing with it in London and in Manchester. And of course you see in the Middle East, whether it's in Iraq, in Iran, in Syria, in Lebanon, in Egypt, and of course in Israel, in Saudi Arabia, and you go to Africa and you see that jihadis are operating everywhere from Djibouti to South Africa. All of these areas that we refer to as separate wars, the Palestinian war in Israel, the Iraq war, they see all of these not as specific wars, but as fronts in a global jihad. Right now, it looks all too possible. I think the world, despite the number of attacks on various countries, is still in denial. They don't want to believe that someone has declared war on them. Radical Islamic proponents believe that 
the West has been engaged in a conspiracy to subjugate Islam. أما الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية بصراحة هي تريد تمس هويتنا الدينية. به جنگ مردم عراق اومدن علاوه بر اینکه به جنگ اسلام اصلا اومدن امریکا هي العدو الاول للامه الاسلاميه لانها تخوض حربا ضد هذه الامه العربيه والاسلاميه what they are saying is the united states is a threat is a danger to them is trying to dominate them is trying to turn the whole world into america and this is what they are telling their people they have to fight against کشورهای دیگر عربی غیر عربی همه هدف اینا قرار میگیره and therefore, uh, it is obligatory of Muslims to strike back. The West needs to be defeated one way or another. وظیفه هر مسلمان و هر غیرتمند غیر مسلمانی است که در مقابل آمریکا و امراکیان و انگلیسیا و اسرائیل ها بیسته و هر کجا اینا منافعی دارن منافعشون رو باید به خطر بندازن ما يمر... من يملك أن يقول كلمة في الجهاد الحق هذا ضد المحتل ويقدم بيوت ويقدم شباب وتقدم تضرب رقاب وتنسف جماجم هذا خطأ النصر والشهادة والتضحية I mean therein lies the issue of the threat of militant Islam the anointed right to carry out executions um, of anybody who is considered a threat to Islam itself. In the Middle East, Islam is our identity, it's our political life, it's our social life, it's our life. As a child, I attended uh, Gaza elementary schools, and uh, we were taught that jihad is a religious holy war for the sake of Allah. That's what it is, to conquer the world for Allah. That is jihad. These are actual scenes broadcast on Arab television. Daily, my uh, classmates would recite poetry, jihadist poetry. And when they recited it, they were crying. They were uh, wishing shahada, to be shaheed, to die as a martyr, to die in jihad. I would summarize the struggle today between radical Islam and the West with the phrase from a Jordanian school book and also Palestinian school book. And the teaching in the Islamic education is this religion will destroy all other religions through the Islamic Jihad fighters. It's Islam against the other religions. It shows how mainstream some of these concepts which are seen as radical Islam have become uh, or are in the mainstream Arab world today. The word jihad in the Muslim vocabulary, in the Muslim consciousness, is a very powerful word. First of all, the word jihad in literal Arabic basically means a struggle. Coming from the word jihad, to, to struggle. Jihad in the traditional sense means self-struggle. Look within yourself to try and make yourself a better person. People think about it, yes, jihad does mean self-struggle, struggle within. But so does Mein Kampf. Mein Kampf means my struggle. But what struggle? 
Nazism had a struggle with what? What did the Jews do to tango in Nazi Germany? Jihad is being used in the Middle East as struggle with the Jewish people, struggle with the West. بريطاني انتزع قلب عجوز بعدما طعنه وشرب من دمها هناك ناس مهوسون بمص دماء كبار السن وهؤلاء وحوش على شكل بشر The main theme in most of the Arab media is hostility to Israel and the United States and the West آنه کن تندی سه بی همتای آزادی دشمن توحید و توحین خداوند In the Arab media there is a uh, process of demonizing Jews and the West There is widespread use of this theme of portraying Israel and the United States as Satan and this is a, an integral part of Arab uh, Islamist propaganda الشيطان الشيطان مغرور الشيطان يحتل الأوطان بسلاح الطغيان إنه الشيطان منبع الطغيان إنه الشيطان منبع الطغيان The amount of hate propaganda is far more extensive and pervasive than the attention it has received in the Western media. ونقول إن الذين يدلسون المصحف الكريم كتاب الله فجر غادرون. But hatred for the West is not limited to the Islamic world. Radical Islam has for years been spreading its ideology in the West. This jihad rally is taking place on the streets of London. The infiltration of radical Islam is so deep, it's shocking. And everyone's in denial about it. The minute you say, oh, this is an extremist group, you know, all of a sudden, it's, oh, you're not being politically correct. You have Al-Muhajirun, who's an open-fledged terrorist entity, speaking out on the streets calling for Muslims to jihad against Britain. We've been infiltrated by people who want the Quran to replace our constitution. من 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 المساجد من بعض المساجد و يعني ايه منطلقين للبيت الابيض يعني كان واحد بيقول في خطبته ان احنا ذاهبون دلوقتي الى البيت الابيض علشان ان شاء الله ينتصر الاسلام ويتحول البيت الابيض الى البيت المسلم يعني هيروحوا يحتلوا البيت الابيض يعني ولا لا ب ب ب ب ب بسواد الاسلام وافكاره سوف م. يتغير البيت الابيض This is a war of propaganda in which the same techniques of subversion that we saw earlier in the challenge posed by fascism and Nazism are repeating themselves. The propaganda of Islam is very similar to the propaganda of Nazism. It's the same hate speech, paranoia, and us against them. 
الذي رفعناه ولا نخشى أن نكرره في كل عام الموت لأمريكا Now the world is reaping. These eggs are hatching. And what's coming out is literally uh, something that comes uh, out of Nazi Germany. Same as in Nazi Germany, the Boy Scouts in Nazi Germany, we had the youth. The youth was being robbed from being youth. The same thing is happening now again. History is repeating itself. I was a very intense believer in the Nazi ideology. And I know what uh, a supreme dedication to an ideology can do. From an early age, Alphonse Heck was influenced by the Nazi worldview. He joined the Hitler Youth at the age of 10, and by the end of World War II, he was a high-ranking officer of the Hitler Youth. It is absolutely correct to say, if you can't learn from the events of Nazi Germany, you will not be able to, to grasp the true intent of the danger of the radical Muslim world today. You're simply hiding. History has an unfortunate habit of always repeating itself. Here is a critical point that is generally overlooked. The anti-Semitism of the Nazis had a great appeal already in the mid-1930s to many Arab nationalists and Islamic fundamentalists. From the mid-30s, from 1936 on, Hitler and his propaganda sections made a great effort to win over the Arab peoples of the Middle East. We see that the undisputed leader of the Palestinian Arab national movement of the 1920s, 1930s and 40s, uh, Haj Amin al-Husseini, the Mufti of Jerusalem, was a fervent admirer of Adolf Hitler. The Mufti was one of the founders of the radical Islamic movement, and Hitler saw at once that this man not only could serve his purpose, but wanted to serve his purpose. There is a very important meeting between Hitler and the Mufti of Jerusalem on the 28th of November, 1941, of which we have a full protocol. And what Hitler explains is that this is first and foremost a war of extermination against Jewry. And he tells him to lock this secret in his heart. He is revealing it to the Mufti. It's extraordinary he should choose the leader of the Palestinian Arab National Movement for this revelation, which is in an official German document. It seemed strange to us that a Mufti who was not a pure Aryan was being received by Hitler. But they said, no, we have the same goal, which is the extermination of the Jews. The Mufti was sent to the Balkans, where he raised a Bosnian Muslim SS division. 
He had several SS divisions, the Hanchar division, for example, where they had nominally Croatian officers, but the rank and file of the Union were entirely Muslim, Arab Muslims, and they were bringing them in from all over the world. I was utterly astonished that the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem had raised a panzer division of Bosnian Muslims to fight along the Waffen SS. The fanatic Muslim world and Hitler both agreed that no ideology can exist be beyond theirs. It's all encompassing. A secular dogma like Nazism is less dangerous than Isla this Islamofascism that we see today. It's less dangerous because Islamofascism has a religious twist to it. It says God the Almighty ordered you to do this, not the Fuhrer. You know, so it is way more dangerous. It's trying to grow itself in 55 Muslim states. So potentially you could have a success rate of several Nazi Germanys if these people get their way. They've been very clear about it. They're the same as Hitler's goals, you know. Uh, kill all the Jews, crush the democracies, destroy Western civilization. They wish to strike down the West. They want to defeat the West. They want to defeat Christianity. They want to defeat Judaism. Islam is superior than the Jews, than the Christians, than the Buddhists, than the Hindus. The only deen Allah accepts is Al-Islam. And whoever seek any other deen apart from Islam will never be accepted. No Kafir is innocent. Two blasts just minutes apart, outside two churches in Baghdad, as those inside worshipped. And you too will meet your destruction because Allah's religion will prevail on this earth. <laughs> They want to spread Islam in their own way. It's very clear, we've heard it so many times from many Muslim leaders, that they want to Islamize the world. Islam Radical Islamic groups want to see the world unified under Islam. It's only a matter of time until we rule Earth, until we control Earth. One day, this very flag will fly over the parliament in London. We will see this flag that will fly over the White House. And we will see the Black House, the Kaaba, will take over the whole world. Islam to the world. You will take over USA. You will take over UK. You will take over Europe. You will defeat them all. You will get victory. You will take over Egypt. We trust in Allah. Indeed, that is me who sent his messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, with the deen of Haq, with Islam, to dominate all of our other religions, to dominate the United States, to dominate the world, even though the non-Muslims may hate it. At the end of the day, Islam must control earth, whether we like it or not. It's a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a promise from Rasulullah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
Every single country in the world is dealing with this on one level or another. When I saw the second airplane hit, I knew jihad has come to America. They wish to strike down the West.